Yeah, I started art college at UCA Rochester, which uh, I did a foundation course, um, not very successfully. <laughs> and then I did a couple of terms at UCA Maidstone on an illustration degree. And I spent most of my time just screen printing t-shirts and avoiding the lecturers. Uh, and yeah, and that's when I just like dropped out and realised that the educational route wasn't for me. Uh, at the time, I wasn't ready to take on board what people were trying to teach me, I think. <laughs> I, I think the main thing that art college taught me is that going to art college isn't enough. That you need to sort of think about things in a broader perspective and to have the sort of realisation that I'm not going to get where I want to be through these channels but I still want to do it. I think it taught me to have a thick skin and to keep pursuing my dreams and not... It was the first time you really have to like ignore people but then also take it on board. So I think failing art college essentially was like massive for me to realising that it's all it's within you how far you can take things and no one can no one can give you like success in art by giving you a piece of paper with a degree on it, you know. Yeah, like music and art have just been completely like all the way through my life like as a kid it was just drawing or playing guitar or playing drums and then I think I just got drawn to music first because of the instant appreciation you get and I guess like Instagram didn't exist so the closest thing was to like getting that feedback is people cheering for you and I was a bit younger and a bit more like ego driven maybe whereas the arts are real like it's you have to focus on it on your own and it's like it's not really about the payoff it's about creating something and feeling satisfied without any feedback i think yeah whatever i've always been into i've always wanted to do it to the extreme i've never just like done things for fun so it, yeah, it was kind of like a, a race between music and art, which one I could do first, and then when I could do one, get the other one. It's just, I just like want to do things that I enjoy, and then if I can make money doing it, it's like a bonus. It's taken me a long time to work it out, but in the current way I work, all of these images are sort of constantly being designed in a sketchbook like the the longest part of the process is coming up with the idea so I have like I've got like 10 moleskins over the past two years that are just full of pictures and then when I stretch a canvas and I'm like flicking through my notebook it's like they inform each other and all of these scenes are like things that I've captured from around the world whether it's like hotel lobby um, carpets or like being on a ferry in in like Scandinavia and I've seen like someone laying on a floor and then the legs come in like so without music I wouldn't do the art and it's it's all been a journey of learning how to mold the two together and grow as a pair that's made it successful for me. Yes I've always been fascinated with like just adopted imagery and people that just lift things and putting your attention onto something so insignificant that most people would miss it and that's almost like the thing that interests me the most going like that shag pile rug like like really blows my mind and it's they're, they're ordinary things like brick walls and they're things that you just elevate into a different viewpoint and then when you really think about like the craftsmanship of putting a brick wall together that's something that I probably could never attain because I'm not perfect enough and it's almost like my paintings are like my homage to the, to the mundane and how much I admire these things. The patterns are what give me the sort of painterly quality that I'm searching for because when you use like thick bold line it can be dragged into this sort of bracket of that's cartoony and that's pop art and like when you lose the brush strokes and it becomes flat people struggle to, they don't want to call you a painter they'll say it's like graphic design or something so it's like the pattern's been my like real turning point of getting the sort of intensity across that I feel when I'm like trying to paint. So when I applied to art college I was like trying to paint sort of Jenny Savile-esque 
like portraits because I thought I was good at drawing. That's the start point, like painting a face, you don't have to think too much about it. And then through art college they pushed you to sort of experiment, but I just couldn't really get my head around having a body of work and finding it. So I, and I like, I draw from so many different worlds and so many different things that it's just taken, it's just been a gradual step by step year after year, like taking baby steps to where now I finally feel like I've achieved something. Like I didn't stumble across this idea f until like a couple of years ago, so at art college it was like, there's probably nothing that resembles what I do, apart from my heavy handed drawing. <laughs>I discovered more of my favourite artists post art college and the, the person that stuck with me the longest is Raymond Pettibon. Just from being into like hardcore and punk music and then like finding out that he did like the Black Flag logo and the Sonic Youth t-shirt design and then going oh this guy merges two worlds that I love like the sort of and how his works kind of it's not he doesn't self-elevate, it's like scraps of paper and they're just stuck to a wall in a like white walled space and it feels like someone real who's just doing it because they have to do it has got the attention and he was the first person that I saw where I was like, that's what I want, that's where I want to go and then through Instagram like, I discovered people like Danny Fox and he inspired me to pick up a paintbrush again because it was just seeing the emotion he could put into a picture and how that can make you feel. And then it all sort of just spiralled because you spend hours scrolling yeah. and it's like Basquiat, Keith Haring. But Keith Haring's like the only like, person who's done, who's, who's, who's managed to merge that world of like commercial t-shirts, like badges, Im like th things that could be clothes, could be f their high art as well. And like he just doesn't sit in one territory and he's still respected in the same way. He could do a big wall mural but he's not street art and I think that's really cool when your work transcends brackets. I think, I think all artists nowadays and humans are just like your output whether it's making a meal or taking a photograph or like your Instagram post it's like just just taking care in all aspects and not being the, the sort of traditional like way you're brought up is what are you going to do, what box do you fit into but the world's opening up and especially in Britain people don't mind you being multi-hyphenated anymore like you can do this and you can do that and if you can write a song why can't you write a book and for me it's like these two things are just like two of many things like I want to do like a photo exhibition of my 35 mil photos and it's just uh, I'd like to like design a, a room one day like interior design based on my art and I just think that you've got to see what you do as like it's you I'm just a thing and anything I do could be yeah. I want to do anything Yeah, like I came from I, I came from a small like village outside of Maidstone, and it was like there was all I wanted was to belong to a gang, like have a, a like-minded mentality. When you come to London or you come to an art fair, you're in a room with your people. You found your tribe, but when you're 13 and you're like looking around your secondary school and nobody has heard of the Clash, which is a reality because like people don't believe me when I say it now, but like when I first started a band no one was into punk, everyone wanted to be in an indie band or make dubstep music and those bands like The Specials and The Clash and they just, even when you look at Black Flag, Sonic Youth, they established such identities and they fitted with a group of people and a, and a tribe of shared views and feelings and when you pair that up with the imagery of the artwork sometimes like from like skinhead specials, like the original Rude Boy look, the art, and you're just like, whoa, this is, this is everything. And when you're sort of young and you aren't ready to develop your own thing, you're like, that's where I want to be. And, I, and it's taken me years to sort of get over looking at that and become looking at what I want to do and start. Because yeah. you can't just fit into what came before. Yeah, I think music sort of leads you to more 
sort of instant feedback. I guess Instagram has opened that sort of, like social media has opened that door for artists a bit, but it can be a bit of a trap in because then you start taking too much feedback, whereas like ignoring people is probably the best way to do your true, authentic work. But there was always that element in music when you're writing a song, you're like, is this just awful and will anyone even get it? And like when I started the band, it was the first time I was making a band that wasn't trying to be big, I was just trying to do something that I felt I really wanted to do and I was like this is the most fun I've had and we won't go anywhere but we're going to have fun and with art it's been a similar experience like in the past I've probably painted things that I know are more appealing to the general population of art lovers but this time I've really felt the need to like sort of make feel, you feel uncomfortable knowing that you're making something new that doesn't necessarily like look exactly like anyone else and it's like this weird you have to push yourself to like, even if I don't like it, I don't like it as much as I like Keith Haring, but you've got to find your own voice and not try and... And those things are parallel, like music and art. Yeah, my, my girlfriend is like a big... Um, Muse is almost like the wrong word. She's a big critic, but in a good way. Like, she'll, she'll say it straight if if she doesn't like something and then that helps me because I, if I really like it then I have to really fight internally about like well what she's been the sounding board for me like starting painting and introducing colour to my work because when I was younger I just liked black and white because it was safe and then also stripping it back again because she got me into all this colour and then I went am I doing this because she likes it or am I doing it because I like it and then finding this middle so yeah it's always it's always a constant process between me and Emma and I'd say that she was as integral to me making art as just I am. It's like a group effort when you're in that intense relationship with someone. It's hard for them not to play a role in it. Yeah, I've got... Like, this piece really nearly didn't make it into the show because the floor just was, like, completely wrong and I sat on it for, like... And I couldn't work out if I just hated the painting or if it was just the floor. So then I like blasted the floor out. But my paintings are quite like one hit. Like I just go over everything once and it's like the actual painting process is more about just making the image I know I'm going to make. I'm not really a... Uh, it's not a do layers, hours and hours getting to a point. I'm not building things up. It's like a... It's a reproduction of an idea I've already got in my head. So when I get it wrong the first time, it's almost like feel, I feel like I need to scrap it and go again. But with that one, it was like, I think I need to be patient with this. And it took me like a year and I like repainted the floor a couple of times and tweaked it. So yeah, it's, uh, you, you've got to go through a rejection process. You can't just put everything out you do. Probably like, because I'll, I'll like stretch the cat, I'll like make the canvases up, stretch the canvases, prime them, get the image, and anywhere from like half a day to two days. So, and then sometimes, sometimes it will only take like three hours. But the ones with the pattern, the pattern takes like a deceptively long time to do. And it's also like, I feel like I'm doing like factory line work because it's like diamond, diamond, diamond and you can't tell if it's any good until the last bit is filled in and you step back. It's, it's like a meditative process for me doing it but yeah, so any time from like two hours to a year. <laughs> My dream is to get to a point where I can be like, one day I paint, one day I record music, one day I gig, and then a couple of days off and then start again. But at the moment it's a, don't beat myself up, just grab the moment when the moment's there. And like, I don't work well in a fixed routine, so it's sort of, the fact I know that, I can just react to that and just steal any moment I've got to just jump in and paint. Yeah, I just use my sketchbook and I sort of, on some tours I've been quite prolific and done like every single day, but then I've also got my film camera, which they all feed into each other, like I'll always be, even if I just take a phone photo of like a carpet I like, it's like the world that I'm building in my head is more like me being in a focus and sometimes I slip out of that focus for a couple of weeks and then I won't do anything, but when it's rolling it's like, I have to do everything and then that makes everything get better.
I'm sort of like a all or nothing, total, con total creative or no creative. Yeah, I fall out of love with it because I don't, or not out of love with it, but I doubt it's necessity because I haven't done it. If I've gone on tour for three months and I'm not proactively doing it for a reason, like there's not a show and people aren't banging down your door, or like you don't feel the need to go and bang people's doors down, and like it's a, it's a constant inner battle, but then things like this happen and you get elevated to such a great height that you sort of never expected and people give you this amazing feedback and then that's just a, enough fuel in the tanks go again and you think you're going to stop and then you just keep rolling. Yeah, just, just like getting the tube to central London and walking down the street and coming into a venue like this, right? Just seeing your name on the wall in vinyl, like all those little things will never ever get old and it doesn't get old with music and this just sort of feels like I feel doubly lucky and grateful that I've been able to get to this level in another field. Yeah, yeah, so um, I sort of collaborated with some guys that helped me produce it. Um, I've always wanted to make my work into sort of like 3D form and I've experimented with like hand making pots but obviously it's like a whole different world. We made the first um, sort of test print and it was like a hand formed, hand painted and it just didn't look high enough quality and it didn't quite reflect what we wanted it to achieve. It's, it was literally, it's um, it's basically a 3D representation of one of my paintings. Yeah. So the, the producers in Stoke literally did everything. They saw the, the picture and they imaged it. And then they like, the thickness of my line and everything is then made into screen prints. And each one's like individual, each dot is individually screen printed on. My hands haven't touched this making it, but it's the process of working with a fabricator to make your art. From the idea to it being here is like over a year, but now we've done it once and I think we know what we've set out to achieve, it could be a lot smoother, but the actual production runtime is like six months because it's a, like a small little team hand doing it to like a really high standard. It sort of like crept into my psyche, like kept painting the cheetah and it sort of, I, it was the beginning of the repetitive pattern that I sort of uh, have become obsessed with and sort of the feelings that these animals in nature exist that are bright yellow with black polka dots essentially all over them and then as humans we really like sort of guard, like guard ourselves and you see lots of very conservatively dressed people and when I like live with like such a flamboyant human who can wear like orange orange fur jumpsuits around to go and do the shopping and you see the human interaction with that and how uncomfortable it makes people and the cheat has sort of just become a bit of a personal symbol to me of like that's that's like nature so like us dressing flamboyant and having confidence like that's what they're born to do so yeah it's got there's something powerful that I can't quite put into words but I think when you see the cheetah pop up into paintings there's something pensive and yeah, it speaks loudly to me, but I can't quite access words for it, and that's, I guess, why I do this stuff. For the, for the words that I can't say, I make paintings. <laughs> yeah, I sort of, I like, to, I like to try and use my motif slightly sparingly, but he's definitely like a, he's a fan favourite, almost. And that kind of sometimes makes me want to, like, not do it, because... I don't want to be like a, I don't want to just be feeling like I'm doing something that just because it's been like. I like looking at people who make sort of high fashion and the process of 
like how it is just art worn on bodies and the one-off nature of it and I think that's something that I'd like to work towards and I've, I've like dipped my toe in like making t-shirts but that's not really where I w would like to be I'd like to make like full suits of the recurring patterns but it's quite a big undertaking getting that made because you need to go and have manufacturers so it's sort of like it's baby steps but all my ideas I'd love to get more into that and I'm definitely influenced by that because like popular culture is the whole thing it's, it's like art is every like it's, it's fashion music film tv all of it Not, not directly. I think there are sort of creatives at the moment, like Tyler, the creator, where you look at when he launches like a new line of clothes and his lookbooks are always so immaculately presented. But I'm not... With this work, it's almost like the, the world just like noise in my head. I'm not too directly... Like, I'm not... I'm not recreating anything I've seen or that influence, but I'd, I love photography, but fashion photography is never something I've really focused on. I do really appreciate it, and I could also imagine these setups becoming a fashion shoot, and I, I'd love to do that as well. I'd love to make these real rooms that you could walk into, and, and that was something I was, I was thinking about doing for this show, but I just felt like it's my first fair. I think I need to just let the paintings speak for themselves and then move on to that. In the same way that I think the patterns would look great on buildings and be street art of a different kind. Like I'm not directly into like graffiti, but you know, like murals and stuff that don't look spray canned, whatever. You know, like that kind of feeling. Yeah, I think so, because for everything I've ever done, it's always been self-led, and I've not reached a point where someone actually has gone, or I've found anyone that I would trust enough to do it, so I like, the minute I lose all the control, that's when you can, things could go wrong and you can't blame yourself, so I feel like, I, I, I def this feels more comfortable to me at the moment, and maybe one day I'd meet a curator that I really... But the idea that your work would just go in some show that you might not feel passionately about is quite scary. But it's also just something that I've not touched upon yet, so I'm not, I'd be new to it. But this definitely is, like, doing things myself is within my comfort zone. Or actually finding a team of people that are friends that can help me and I curate, that's my comfort zone. I am currently free sailing there's no exhibitions planned but it's just I want to continue to make more of the work I've got like this I've got a ton of ideas that are based on the more of the larger stuff but it's just as and when the right opportunity presents itself for me and there's going to be more there's going to be more ceramic and 3d work but it's just continuing to develop the world bit by bit through lots of different things